This right here is a saddle valve. And I want to find out how many of you have one of these in your house here. So if you go and find the the ice maker supply line for your refrigerator, that's that water hose that comes out the back, go and trace where that goes and maybe it goes under your kitchen sink and it gets its water somehow, maybe it attaches through the pipe like this. So if you see one of this, then you have it. And maybe you have something like this down in your basement as well if you have a basement. So if you have one of these saddle valves, let us know in the comments down below. But in today's video, we're going to show you why these saddle valves are a bad idea, why you shouldn't have one, and it all starts right now. All right, so this here is your saddle valve here. And the reason why they call this a saddle valve is because they clamp it around a, a pipe, see, so the pipe would go right here through the middle here, right here, and it clamps over it like a saddle, and you have this little black rubber piece here that goes up in here, and it will clamp over the pipe, and it kind of looks like this, see? And so the problem with this, what people do with this is usually handyman and DIYers use this part here. If they have to tap into a copper pipe for water, and they're using this to make like an ice line going to your ice maker or to for fresh water for your coffee maker. They'll do this and what happens is the way this works is you, uh, you see this guy right here up top here. The more you tighten him down, there's a little needle here underneath here that pierces down into that copper pipe. So it taps into that copper pipe. And then when you tighten everything down, this is supposed to tighten completely down around the pipe. And then you have a nice source of water, and it was quick and easy and dirty, just like all the other code violations that we talked about, okay? So the problem with these saddle valves is they work real good at the beginning, and it doesn't take long at all before they start leaking and dripping water. And that can turn into a very costly repair, depending on where your saddle valve is located. And it, of course, can lead to massive thousands of dollars in mold damage just from from stupid $5 part that you had no business using in the first place. So you're probably wondering, well, why does Home Depot and Lowe's and all the other stores make these available to people? Why are they using them? Well, I don't know why. It, it's stupidity. There's a lot of parts that they sell you that you should not be using, and this is definitely one of them. In fact, most plumbers, when they show up on the scene, will just take this off and, and chuck it. So the people generally use this because they lack, one, they lack the skill set to do any kind of soldering of pipe, and two, they're too cheap to bring in a plumber that can do the, the fix for them in, in 10 minutes and, and just solder in like a T adapter for them, and then they could have a tap into, uh, to convert into something like this where they could screw their hose in for the water. But it's al it always boils down to time and money. Somebody was trying to save time, somebody was trying to save money, and then you combine that with a handyman that doesn't know what the heck he's doing, all right, has absolutely zero common sense. And I don't know how in the world people think that it's okay to just tap in and pierce a pipe like that. And I'll tell you something else too. A lot of times when they tighten down on these or just the act of piercing into the pipe can deform that pipe and take it out of round. That also could lead to turbulence of the water inside that pipe which could break down any nearby soldering connections on the pipe too. So there's secondary failures that can happen. I've seen some of these that they were so badly corroded and everything that eventually it could corrode through the copper pipe that it's on because of all of the water leaking through. That will greatly accelerate that pipe degrading and falling apart and just crumbling. And then you'll have a much bigger leak on your hands, one that's like literally shooting water. So. That's why you never want to use a saddle valve ever. Okay, so there's your saddle valve on the pipe here, ready to be installed. So this is how your uninformed handyman do this. They screw down both ends of this until it's tightened onto the pipe. And I'll do this side here. So they wait till it's nice and snug like that, you see? And make sure it's really squeezing on there good. And you can see how the, that's the saddle right there. 
Okay, so then what they do is they, they start screwing this thing down here, and that little point is going to shoot right down into the middle of it and go right into the top of the pipe. So I can feel it grabbing into it now, so I think we might have it. We'll see. They usually go all the way down till it's tight. Okay, so now we're going to loosen this back up, and we'll see if it made the if it pierced the pipe there. So this will come all the way up again. Reverse it all the way back up to where it was. Then we'll loosen this. You can see right there, there's your hole. So the hole is right there where the tip of my finger is. So it's just this very small hole. And that hole allows the water to come up through the saddle valve here and into, it comes out of this port here where you have your ice maker hose going. And that's how it supposedly works. Okay, and here's another reason why you don't want to use a saddle valve. So back in 2007, there was a big class action lawsuit brought against Sears. So Sears had done numerous installations where the lawsuits alleged that Sears used unlicensed plumbers to do these installs and that these, these installation people didn't know what they were doing and that they used saddle valves which created leaks. And there was one case where a, a husband and wife reported $30,000 in damage to their kitchen because of leaks from these saddle valves. So that's another reason why you don't want to use them. And it's still mind boggling to this day how many companies ship these saddle valves with their products, whatever you're buying from them. They're still shipped in kits all the time and they should just never be used. Okay, so now we're going to show you where in the code it says here that you cannot use these saddle valves, okay? So again, here in our Florida building code and the plumbing uh, codes here, which are based on, like I've mentioned before, the uniform plumbing code. And um, in there, in chapter six is where we find ourselves now under water supply and distribution. So right here in section 605.9, under prohibited joints and connections, it says the following types of joints and connections shall be prohibited. And if you look at number four, it says right there, saddle type fittings. And again, there's no ambiguity here. There's no, well, they didn't directly say it, so we should be able to use it, or, or we're just using a temporary, um, you know, we should be able to use it. Nobody ever does a temporary saddle joint because they know damn well if they unscrew the thing and take it off, they're gonna have water shooting everywhere. So let's not kid ourselves. Anybody that thinks they're doing a temporary fitting with a saddle type fitting with a saddle valve is nuts. They're just lying to themselves, they're lying to you, they're hiding it from the inspectors, and this is why you do not ever use a saddle type fitting. And we hope you enjoyed this video, and if you have, please give us a thumbs up down below. Be sure to hit that subscribe button down below and hit the bell icon next to it, that way you'll be alerted every time we upload a new video, because believe me folks, you don't wanna miss a single one of our videos on on situations like this, tool reviews, we go into the stores, we find you the best deals that are currently going on. We give you home renovation tips, bathroom renovation tips, all sorts of engineering disaster information. And that's it for this time, folks. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you on the next one.